Like the old sailor adrift the sea might say, water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. We too in a scale model boating hobby might say, propellers, propellers everywhere, but not one to fit my boat. I built a scale model weasel several years ago, modifying the kit to add four shafts instead of three and going with slightly small propellers. In doing so, I used uh, Grobner's 30 millimeter propeller, which looked like that but very, very bad performance. Then I ordered some new propellers, 40 millimeter, going from 30 to 40, thinking that I could put those in my lathe and turn them down a little bit to get them down to about 36 or 37 millimeters in diameter. But after looking at them for a while, they too were paltry. The uh, pitch is not very high and is not very much bladed surface area. So then I started looking at 3D printing just only two weeks ago, and I came up with my first little propeller design, which looked like this. What I was trying to do was achieve something close to what the original speedboats. That was my first design, which had kind of broad blades on it, but the pitch, again, was somewhat mild. I redesigned that a little bit, came up with my second prototype, higher pitch, wasn't too bad, but uh, the design did not have very good lines at the end of the propeller. So I went ahead and I modified that further, and that came up with this prototype. And again, I'm using 3D printing, using it. PLA monofilament, which is biodegradable, probably not good for water, um, especially if something rotating in water, it might erode down a little bit, and I was concerned about that, but I had ordered some ABS filament. This was my better adaption of that. I, I cleaned up the propeller blades a little bit, and then I was pretty satisfied with that. I also experimented as I needed a four millimeter thread on the inside and I had some little four millimeter threaded inserts. So I epoxied one in there. This is, a, again, my test, final test. Then I switched over to ABS. This is what the ABS print looks like. And what I did is I actually built up my own buildup layers because in a monofilament printer, you have to have support on any overhangs. Otherwise, the filament does not know where to set itself on top of an open area. So I, a little bit more about that when I get into the video. The next stop is the same propeller blade. This being a left-hand one, this is a right-hand one, because they, they have four propellers, two turning in one direction, two in the other direction. So this is what the same thing looks like after I broke all the support structures off of it. Then, after I did that, I sent it down the propellers to get that kind of a finish. Then, after I did that, I cemented in the insert using JB Weld epoxy. Then I sanded down to this finish. Then I painted it. Then I let it dry for a day, and then I gave it a light sanding again and another coat of paint. So this is my finished propeller, one that I'm going to be using on the boat, and I'll be using the other three as well. 3D printers need support when they're building the features of your model. Here we have the base, which is sitting on the plate of the 3D printer, and as the nozzle comes around back and forth and it raises up as it goes, it has to have other features to build on. So we start out with the base plate and I made some supports part of the CAD model so as it, the printer nozzle goes back and forth it's actually building up the supports and finally up to the final features of the part so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start breaking apart the supports so it gets you an idea of what this involves I'm just going to start out by taking a few of the easier pieces this is all disposable off the bottom 
I put holes in these as part of the CAD model so that it is easier to work with. They got a hole right in the side here. So I can come in here and I can cut away and you have to just be, be on the careful side not to break into the actual propeller itself. As I said earlier also that where the support meets the model I made it as narrow as possible so that there's a minimum amount of surface area that has to break apart. And actually, being it is so narrow, it actually breaks free from the surface of the propeller fairly easy. A lot of it can be done not only just by cutting, but twisting and pulling. Now I'm starting to see the shape of this first blade of the propeller here. I made the supports using concentric rings. I had three, uh, the center hood of the propeller is, is part of the propeller. Then there's another ring that's concentric with it that's sitting about right where these circles are. Then the outer ring and then there's one in the center that actually has some arcs and a ring going through. So let's get back to this other blade here. Getting down to the point where we get that center ring out. And then that comes off, and you can see the shape here where the whitish area is. That is where the supports were. And we can see the first blade starting to take place. We can see the first blade of the propeller starting to take shape here as we remove the supports. And then we'll start on the next one. Get in here and just Cut that out. Breaking free the supports furthest away from the blade first. And then finally getting up and working into it. Do the back end of the propeller because the support is very short from the base going after the propeller. Come in here. From the outer ring and the inner ring and then we can start pulling that off and the last one get the short end of the propeller or where the propeller is cutting, comes close to the base get that piece off roll it away come in here a little bit more of it. Get the inner and outer ring trimmed. And there's our propeller. This will take a little further trimming. You can see where some of the supports are still need to be pulled free. And we'll get down to a certain level where we can't actually grab the supports anymore. Very little left of them. And might have to trim them with a hobby knife. Nice sharp blade, just scrape them down, flush to the propeller, and then finally sandpapering. And there's our finished propeller. Let me just put that on here. Or semi finished, I should say. As for our inside features, I take a flat bottom drill. This one's slightly smaller than what I need, but I can get in there and I can kind of twist it around the edge and scrape it down in preparation for where the insert is going to be epoxied in. Just to give you a fast review of how I created the propeller itself which is sitting right here on my support, I created the hub which was done fairly easy.
and I also created the blades using these cross sections of the propeller as the propeller uh, moves further back. This, these cross section increases and changes. Then I rotated those three times, made three copies, and put them around this axis of the hub and brought them all together. Very simple. Once the propeller was done, I decided to figure out how to make the support platform. And basically I had these the base and then I had these concentric rings, they just were circles that were like hollow pieces of tubing that stuck up, brought the the propeller down and figure out where the front and rear blades was and just on the inside of them just slightly on the inside of the leading edge and the trailing edge I added a little curve and then brought the propeller down where it sat on top of that or where I wanted it now keep in mind that these concentric circles are all sticking up through here subtracted the copy of the propeller blade off of that so I was able to break the top off the bottom and then I came in here and I added all of these little chamfers. Now those little chamfers give very little point of contact between the support and the propeller blades themselves. So when everything is put together there is just a little contact edge in here and that helps break off the support itself. If you use the system supports, you wind up getting some sort of shape, usually triangles or diamond shapes or whatever, lots of pieces in here, and wind up breaking parts of the blade off too. So making a custom support works out very well.